If you have your Bibles, turn to first. Well, go on and turn, if you don't mind, to Galatians chapter 4, 1 through 7, and where we're going to shift into the passage that we have been on in the name of the Lord. If you expect to get preached at and yelled at to get motivated, you at the wrong place. We're going to learn the Word of God. We're going to let the Word of God be the motivation within our heart because the Word of God is something we can stand on when there ain't no preacher yelling at you and mom and dad ain't yelling at you. The Word of God in my heart and life is what gives me the ability to move on under the pressures we live in. How many you know we live under pressures nowadays? Every time you turn around, there's pressures of life coming our way. But let me give you the new, good news. The good news is this. There is an ability with the Holy Spirit of God living within you, not to freak out. You can do it in the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Think of it this way. This is New Living Translation, and we'll get to the King James here in just a moment, but this does a great job of saying it. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not better, better off than the slaves. Now, let me just stop there. The word slaves there just means nothing more than a person who is subjected to somebody. If you're over a company and you got people underneath you working, you're considered a servant, a slave, someone subjective. Guess what? Brother Damon is a slave. I'm subjective to what God's Word says. So don't let the word slave here get you mixed up, all righty? It was just a King James termination that they used, all righty? But children are not better off, much better off than the slaves until they grow up. Even though they actually own everything their father had. No, no, y'all see what it's saying here. You're subjected to slaves or subjected to people over you. Oh, even though you own it all. They have to obey even though they actually own everything their father had. They had to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it is with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent His Son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent Him to buy freedom for those who were slaves to the law so that He could adopt us as His very own children. And because we are His children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Abba means daddy. Uh, a lot of us didn't have daddies, but you know what? Or maybe daddy did something crazy, but the good news is we can cry out to our father. He ain't going to backhand us. He's going he to say, come on, son. Is it? He going to throw you up on his spiritual knee in a sin and pat you on the back and have a good time with you in the name of the Lord, okay? His very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now, you are no longer slaves, but God's own children, child. And you are, since you are his child, God has made you his heir. What are we heirs to? We're heirs to everything that Jesus Christ purchased for us. Wholeness. Blessings. You are worthy to receive everything that Jesus died for because he is worthy and I am now an heir, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You could say he's my elder brother. You know what I'm saying? He's my elder brother. And so whatever Jesus is heir of, I'm heir of. Now, religious people can't handle that. It just drives religious people slap nuts. It really it gets mad. Y'all, you're being irreverent. No, I'm showing all the reverence in the world. My Jesus made a way that I could have happiness. It ain't nothing. Else. My Jesus made a way that I could be made whole. My Jesus made a way that I could enjoy the journey without getting so up with, uh, with uh, so upset with myself. So yeah, uh, I am all that in a bag of popcorn because Jesus made me all that in a bag of popcorn, as we say in the name of the Lord. All right, let's get to our text. And the point was a children. That receive inheritance, they have all that set up. Could you imagine being a 15-year-old and knowing your father just left you a couple million dollars over in that account? And he has set an appointed time for you to get a hold of that hands, so uh, get a hold of that money, so he puts you under tutors and stuff. What's the point of putting you under tutors? To try to help you get prepared 
for everything he's fixing to give you because if you ain't careful, you'll get all that money, hang out with the boys. Up. Oh, boy, I can see you young people now, multi-millionaires up in South Panola saying, here it is, boy, what y'all want? You know, I got the money. You know, I, oh, hey, Brother D's coming in the room, party. And all your friends be behind you saying, yeah, yeah. You know why? They just using you for your money. You know, they just, hey. And then one day it all runs out because what? You wasn't tutored in the right way of handling. And that is how it is with the kingdom. And that's what we're learning a little bit in this passage of Scripture. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in high places. He has given these things here. And what we're going to learn to is in between all that God has given us, and over here, this Christian walk where so many people are walking a unfruitful, bearing, uh, barren life, God has some tutors that he wants to allow us to get involved with, uh, involved with that if we will learn, the, the sooner the better. The sooner we learn to trust in this, then we can begin to tap in. Thank God he lets us tap in a little bit as we're learning too, all right? We tap into that. But look, if, we're li if you're living, the, if the Christian life is not working for you, it's because the add-ons here that he has for you. And that's today what we're going to learn. Let's go on now to 1 Peter. We've read this passage. Y'all should know it. Excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1. You should know all this by heart already. Let's get after it. Simon Peter, a bondservant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with, with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the reason why we received it all. Grace and peace multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called or given us an invitation to us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceeding, not just promises, exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers are partners together of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is world through lust. We've been spending all our time on these next couple of verses. We'll read them more, and then we're going to go back to what we're going to focus on today. But for this very reason, give all diligence to add to your faith virtue. We've already talked about that, okay? And add to your virtue, knowledge. We've already talked about that. And to knowledge, self-control. We talked about that last week. All righty. And to self-control, perseverance. Now, notice these are add-ons. You can't jump into perseverance without first learning a little bit about virtue and knowledge and self-control. These are add-ons. This is the next step that he's adding to your life to be able to begin to walk into the promises that are already yours. Okay? And to perseverance, godliness, to godly brother kindness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, love. But... If these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your calling an action for sure. That word sure there is not calling your salvation for sure there, but calling elect. a lot of your people believe that some are elected and some are not. That is not what it's talking about here. That word, make sure that your election, you being saved, is sure. The word sure there means stable. Okay? Stable. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. See the, see the point he's making there? For, for sudden entrance or access will be supplied to, you, supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we love you. Thank you for your book. Thank you for your word. God, I thank you. Help me, Lord, help me stick close to your text. Lord God, because it's the truth. It is anointed. It can change hearts. It can make the vilest sinner clean. We love you. And open our hearts to hear what your book says to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, in between having a fruitful life or an unfruitful life, we got what you call the add twos. The add twos are in us. We're sandwiched between, again, fruitfulness and unfruitfulness in life. The act add twos that we're going to be talking about, the add twos 
or gives us access or gives us, grants us access into the blessings of God. In for the, it's the, gives us access into being made whole. What do I mean being made whole? Being made whole mentally. Instead of allowing my world to be constantly wrecked by the past, constantly controlled by past failures and mistakes, through Jesus Christ, I can add to these virtues in my life and I'll begin to be made whole and won't be bound by so much of the past, past shame, past failures, past experiences. When we begin to know what God's Word says to us about that, okay? So it gives us access into those things that it has for us. And another thing it says in verse through 3 now, I want you all to get this. This is saying this about you. If you're a born-again child, this is what the Word of God, which I trust is saying this about you. God gives you His glory. Now, what does that mean, God gives you His glory? Well, you know, some people got the false humility. Yeah, you know, just, you know, I'm just nothing. I'm just old sinner down here, just barely making it, just give all the glory to God. That is false humility. True humility says, yes, I am a child of God. Yes, I am joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I am grateful for that, and it's all because of what Jesus. It's willing to accept what God's Word. And because that glory comes into my life, and I walk in that mindset, guess what? People will begin to see the change of what's going on in my life, and when they begin to see that change in my life, guess who all's getting all the glory? Because they recognize, I know that bird what it used to be. I know what she used to be. And now we're being able to say, well, Jesus is doing this in my life. The Holy Spirit's doing it in my life. And God is being, the glory is being given to God because of what's going on in my life. Let's read a couple of passages if we can't prove this. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting with verse 2. You yourself are all the endorsement we need. Okay, this is John chapter 17, verse 20 through 22. Your very lives are the letters that anyone can read just by just looking at you. When people just looking at you, we need to come to the place when people look at you and see you, they see Jesus. They see his attributes. Look what he says. Christ himself wrote it, not with ink, but with God's living spirit. Not, ch not chiseled into stone, but carved into human lives, and we published it. Look what he says. Our lives as Christians, our lives, people are looking at us. And when they see the change that's happening in our lives, they're seeing God's word written on our actions and what we're doing. Let's keep on going. Look at this right here. John chapter 17, verse 20. I'm sorry, that other one was 2 Corinthians. Corinthians chapter 3. This is John 17. Look what he says. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe. That's you and me. On me through their word, that they will all be one as thou, Father, art, art in me and I in thee. Now, this is King James gets me here. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gave me, I have given them. Look at that. The glory that rested upon Jesus' life. What was, this? without getting too big out of hand, what was some glory that was on Jesus? Somebody tell me. It's not hard. Huh? Holy Spirit, but what's some actions? Let's go to action words. Love, healing, and all these things. So that's how the glory of the Lord was. Jesus did these things, okay? He did these things in his fame. The Bible says they were healed in his fame or his glory went all throughout the land. So when Jesus did these things, he was manifested. He's one with the Father. But look what the Scripture says. The Scripture said that Jesus has given that same glory that he had. He's given it to you. The problem with so many people is they don't believe it. And so when you don't believe it, you live over here in this unfruitful life. And it was all because you didn't allow some of these add-ons in your life. You didn't learn to get established in virtue, which means character and inward wholeness. Didn't get into knowledge of God's Word. You don't learn self-control. You're still one of those folks ready to kill everybody when somebody does something a little wrong with you. And so God said, look, I'd give this glory to you, but right now you're glorifying the devil. You need to learn to glorify the one who got a hold of you in your heart and mind, okay? And you can do this. You can, listen to me, you can do this. Somebody tell me, I can't do it. Yes, you can. It is amazing what happens when the grace of God comes on us and gives us the ability to do something that we couldn't do our own self. So let's keep on hanging with me, okay? 
Why is it important for the promises to God to be visible in your life? Why? Think about it. Why, why is it important for you? I'm not talking about, no, I'm talking to you, whoever you are. I'm talking to you. Why is it important for the glory of God to be manifested in your life? Young people, why is it important for the glory of God to be manifested in your life? For everybody on earth, we represent our God. Like, going, are we representing by fake news? Let's get that what I'd say. Is it fake news? But I'm saying, are we displaying fake news? We should not be, okay? So God's within us, God's working in us, and the glory of God wants to manifest through us for everybody around. Look at me. You, li listen to this statement right here. Okay, listen to this right here. Remember, all, em all the emotional baggage that we have stored in us has come from an unbiblical or a broken relationship in the past. All your hurts and pains can be pointed back to a broken relationship somewhere. Whether it be parents, children, or whatever, it's everything you got goes back to a relationship. The good news is God now wants to heal relationships in people's worlds by doing what? Using an individual. The only way, if God wants to do something in somebody's life, guess what he's got to do? He's got to use you. Hey, right here. If God is going to touch a person's life, guess who's he's got to use? You. Well, I'm going to call a pat. No, he wants to use you. Up at the hospital, if they want something done up there, they don't call me, do they? They call you. They call me for a little bit of air conditioning work, but I can only do so much when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of it. I got to call somebody to do it. I walk by the GE building. There's that big GE building up there. I have no clue. All I know, it says GE in on. They wouldn't let me walk in and take over everything, would they? No, that's why they got folk like you that work in G that knows that kind of stuff. They definitely wouldn't let me be a popo coming in with my gun shooting. Say, I tell you what, hold up, son. I am a part of the law, boy. You better abide and listen to me. You have the right to remain silent. There you go. I heard it a lot on TV, so I could probably get a little bit into there. You see what I'm getting at? So God uses people like you, sticks you into society that the glory of the Lord could be manifest. And so that's what God, and you've got to start believing that about yourself. Instead of believing all the lies, you've got to start believing that God wants to use you. God, you. In everything of who you are. Short, bald, fat, skinny. All of that. You know, remember that mirror I put on the bathroom in there and I put on there, I'm a child of God? Well, that thing's tilted forward. You know what happens when you look at yourself in a mirror that's tilted forward? You're short and fat, and you're even short and fatter. <laughs> I get finished using the bathroom and I turn and look in that mirror and it's leaning forward or something is because I look an awful lot shorter and fatter in that mirror than I know I am in real life. And thank God that I said I'm a child of God because I look at myself and I'm like, boy, you're getting shorter and rounder. <laughs> but then I remind myself, I am still a child of God, no matter how round or short I get or how bald I get. I am a child of God. And that's what we got to learn to do in life. We look at ourselves and we disqualify ourselves. We judge ourselves not worthy to do something because of what the world standard has taught us. But you know what? We don't judge ourselves based upon the world standards. We judge ourselves based upon what Jesus Christ done. That way they can say, you know that short, bad preacher up at Hosanna? Guess what? He loves Jesus. He's weird, but he loves Jesus. <laughs> and that's what he needs to say to some of us. I heard that, Kobe. I heard that amen back there. Yeah, you are. You remember, you are a slave at Hosanna, all right? You, you have subjected me. I will fire you. I get a bigger amen than that. He, he, got, he was kind of happy saying that amen, wasn't he, huh? Amen! You know, sound like a Pentecostal back there. So listen to me. Because we got all these people with all these struggles that are around us, just like you have and are getting over, I'm to re 
I love, I put a video on Facebook today. I'm to re-represent Jesus to you. A man hurts you, but a man's going to show you Jesus. A woman hurts you, but a woman is going to represent Jesus to you. Don't throw yourself out of the link. You're valuable for the kingdom of God. Let's keep on going. Look what he says now. Now, all of that to get to the main topic, and we won't be here long. 2 Peter 1, 7, For this very reason, given all diligence to add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance. Everybody, the King James says patience. You know how many times I heard, don't pray for patience. I tell you what, don't pray for patience. Pray for patience. You're going to go through all kinds of stuff to learn, learn patience. Well, that's really not what the word patience means. See, our first reasoning assumes that this is talking about interactions with people, but it's not. It's talking about the stresses and pressures of life that comes our way while we're expecting good to take place in our life. The promises. Us, us having perseverance while we're waiting for the promises of God to work in our life. Abraham waited a long time before his promise come to part in his life. Noah waited 100, and 100 to 120 years waiting for the promise of rain. Now, can you imagine that? Waiting 100 years for the flood to come, and that was public. He was out there building a boat, and there wasn't no water. So, you see what I'm saying? The perseverance. So, hang in there. The word pers- patience or perseverance is a, comp- a compound word of the Greek word hupo or mino. I guess how you want to pronounce this all right. The word hup- hupo, and you, you see it in a lot of scriptures there, it means that which is coming down. Now, y'all hang with me. That which is coming down in my life, okay? Uh, to be under something or something that is coming down. Now, y'all keep, this, keep that scripture up there. The first part of patience or perseverance means something is coming down or I'm standing underneath something. The next part of the word means to stay or abide. Put the words together. Something is coming down upon you and you've got to learn to stay and abide in in the situation. And that's why we got the word perseverance. When the pressures of life are coming upon us, a person with perseverance or patience gets up under what God is doing in my life and becomes stable in the midst of all the pressures and struggles that are in my life. It's the struggle and pressure of becoming everything that God says over here in this fruitfulness in my life. Maybe right now, you're not all the way made whole mentally. Maybe you still deal with a little bit of anger. The good news is, you stay patient, stay under what God is doing in your life. Guess what? And God will begin to be, one day you'll look back, hallelujah, you'll look back and say, look what God has done. Maybe you come up in poverty, haven't had nothing, just hang in there, stay under what God's doing, abide under it, get stable, and guess what? The good news is God Almighty is going to come in and do something in your life if you'll stay and have a little bit of patience and a little bit of perseverance in this life instead of just getting crazy and leaving. See, as some of you here, you were that kid that had all the talent in the world, but because nobody noticed it right off, you quit. You're the one who just never got involved with anything because nobody tooted your horn at the time. And if you were to just remain and stayed stable and persevered under, one of these days they would have called out your name and you would have been able to give glory to God. But because you'd had no perseverance or no patience, you threw in the towel maybe right before what God was wanting to do great in your life. The word means to remain in one spot, to keep, a posi- keep your position. It's tenacity to maintain territory that has been gained. I've made it this far and God's doing healing me and I sure ain't going back. It's the state of mind that says, this is my spot, these are my promises, and I'm not moving. 
It's willing to claim, God, because of the person of Jesus Christ, I can claim healing on my body. I can claim wholeness in my mind. And I'm standing still and staying stable until that stuff comes into my life. It's an attitude that declares, I don't care how heavy the load gets or how much pressure I'm under, I will not budge one inch. That's what you do for your children. Your word says, Lord says, me and my household shall be saved. And I, ain't gonna, I know they just did something stupid and I want to tell them, you idiot, why don't you just... But you know what? I'm going to trust God for salvation to come into my... I ain't going to give up one inch. You ain't going to bring doubt and all. I know that you're acting stupid right now, but I declare my household shall be saved, shall be whole and declared in my life. The same thing, you get a little ache in your body, just stand up to God. I know it's there. I ain't denying it, but I declare that I shall see the blessing of the Lord in the land of the living. You're just declaring what the Word of God says, and you hang on, and you ain't giving up. You know, there's a lot of they's in this world. They'll come by and tell you, quit. They'll tell you, you're radical. They'll tell you, you ain't got to do all that and be saved. Well, you're right, I don't have to do it. I get to do it. I ain't giving up an inch. And I have to deal with this regularly just like you. I mean, come on. It didn't rain for six weeks when we put grass down. <laughs> now we got grass down and it ain't stopped raining for six weeks. We need to put concrete down. But you know what? Ain't no big deal. You know what I'm doing? I'm going to abide under the promise that while it's raining, everybody in the country is driving by. You know what? They can drive by now, but one day somewhere in the future, it looks a lot better than it does right now. That place is going to be standing. You know what? You're there in the future, and you're looking. You're going to look a whole lot better than you do right now, but you've got to have patience and persistence that says, I will not give up in Jesus' name. Patience is something inside you that you've got to have. So if you're going through some rough circumstances at the moment in your life, and I know you're in here, because I go through them. If you're going through some rough circumstances at, uh, circumstances at the moment, be encouraged. It's a fleeting, temporary condition that will soon change in your life. <laughs> Believe me, I've been so broke. If I did, I, I've been so broke in my life, I'm like, oh, how, you just, how do I, who can I, who can I borrow? What can I do? Your children saying, Daddy, are we poor? I've been there. But I put up in my mind there were some things I was going to do. I'm going to make sure I always give because I'll say, God, I've been giving. What's going on with my finances? And thank God here 32 years later. I'm telling you, y'all think it's funny? Me and that child went off to Bible college. If it wouldn't have been for her mama, she wouldn't have a bit of clothes. Her mama bought her the clothes for the first two years we had Bible college. I am not lying. I had holes in the bottom of my shoes and put cardboard in the bottom of, them, bottom of it. When all them Lincoln Continental preachers' kids were at Bible college, here I come walking in plastic shoes from Walmart. Plastics. You know the type of shoe that is not pleather and then a different sole? Mine was plastic. All the sole and stuff was molded all together. And a hole wore in the bottom. Here I would come in the foyer. Quick, 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 <laughs> quick. Smash, smash, smash. All my friends were at LSU saying, hey, party. And here I was. Smash, smash, <laughs> smash. But look at me. Through patience. Patience and perseverance. When God began to pour the blessings on me and pour the blessings on us, we were able to manage it a little better. Because Damon would have knew about, you know, if, I would, if I'd have been making the money now that I would a long time ago, I'd have been like I was talking to y'all about. I'd have been walking through, how come y'all ain't got a church like Hosanna? Boy, I tell you what, if you could preach like me, sing like me, you know, oh, look at me. That's what I'd have done. 
You know what he's done? He's fed me a little bit at a time to help me to come to a place. Now it's like, God, you do what you want to do here because I know it has absolutely nothing to do with me. That's back when I had a mullet, you know, long curly hair. And I used to be build the arms. I thought I was something, you know. I'd say, hey, you know, I'd like Dusty Rose, you know, just, you know. The macho man, my mother, you know, all that business. But you know, it ain't nothing like that no more. Now, you know, I'm like one of them old wrestlers. Get all I can do is talk into the mic in the ring. All right, here we go. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? I'm still going to do it. Hallelujah. Now, that's for you wrestling people. All you folks that don't, Brother Rafer don't know much about wrestling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Woo, nature boy. Huh? I said I'd cut some of this fluff out, and there's a whole lot of it coming out. <laughs> now, the good news is this, and I wasn't going to say it, but it's so much fun. I have found out that person and perseverance and patience has something to do with a woman. <laughs> it says, but let patient have her perfect work. That's a joke. It ain't got nothing to do with a woman. <laughs> but when I did read that, isn't it amazing? Us men got a long suffering when it comes to women and her. All right, but let's get to work right quick. <laughs> James chapter 1, let's look at it right quick. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Let's look at a couple things right quick. Number one is God ain't putting you under the trial. You may be going through the trial. God is with you in the trial, but God ain't the one doing it because the church has been known. I'd probably even be guilty of this in the past. God just doing it to you. God is allowing it. There's a big difference. Okay? So look at me. The word fall into is the same. Remember the story of the good Samaritan? The Bible says a certain man was going into Samaritan and fell among thieves. Okay? This is the same word. When you fall into trials, this is something you fall into. This is not something you meant to do. This is not something you brought upon yourself necessarily. This means you were going about your business and God, look what he says here. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. The temptation, the temp, word temptation just means pressure. Count it all joy when you fall into. The word trying there, I'll get to, but let her patience be perfect. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience. The word trying there means something that is tried or proved or tested. Remember the fruit of loom woman? Remember the old lady on the fruit loom woman? Spectre, was it Haynes? Was it Haynes? Our Haynes woman? What'd she say? They ain't done until I say they're done. And she stretched the underwear. Some of y'all stretched the underwear. Some of it, oh, y'all didn't get that, but I'm sorry. Maybe. Stretched the underwear and stretched the underwear. Y'all still ain't got it, all right. Or I'm a heathen for saying that, all right, okay? All right, look at me. So try me and listen to me. Listen to me. When we get put under the pressures of life, the trying of your patience is really to prove to you that you can make it. See, it's, I passed the test in first grade, and now I can move on to second grade. It's to let you know, your parents know, and everybody around you, you did everything that you need to do to move to the next stage. So sometimes the things that we're going through in life, the pressures of life, is trying to get you to the point for you to recognize it's time I can move on in life. In other words, it's time we may need to put away some of the toys that we're still playing with at the age of 50 and move on. And look what it says here. But let patience have her perfect work. The word work there means to fashion, to render one fit for a thing. I 
in these pressures of life, all God is trying to do with us sometimes is get us ready for our assignments. Get us ready for everything he has for us because he knows that if too much gets dumped on us at one time that he's already provided remember I showed you I'm an heir to everything it's already mine God has just put in an appointed time for me to grab a hold of those things and if I don't get to the add to's in life and I don't add to virtue knowledge and knowledge uh, self control and the self control uh, persistence here or patience if I don't allow that to work in my life, I will do something foolish and cause me to lose everything that God has for me. And that's what some of you have repeatedly done. And we blamed it on everybody, but still stepping back and say, you know what, just, I'm just honest, God. I just hadn't been very good at adding to these things in my life. I, I threw in the towel too quick. I, for some reason, didn't think I was worthy enough to have these things. But now, Lord, I know it's not about what I can do. It's about what you did. And because of what you did, I am worthy to receive everything. No amount of baggage, no amount of, amount of the past, no matter what I've gone through. I can't change all that stuff. But one thing I can do, I can put some add to's on my life. That way, when I look back, everybody will know, look what God has done. See, some of you think that you could have been a 10, but because you messed up so much that you're only ever worthy to reach a 5. Called the law of the lid. Well, let me give you a little bit of experience. Start hanging around 7 and 8s and stop hanging around 4 and 3s. And they'll lift you on up to a 7 and 8. And when you get to a 7 and 8, try to decide you can hang around a 10, glory to God. That way you can get on up there. You hear me? If you hang around the same old people doing the same old thing, guess what you're going to do? It. But you know what? Begin to get around some other people. I want to get around some business people. I want to get around some people that have made it in life and just sit around and just listen to them, what they did and how they handled themselves. And guess what? I'm just going to rise to the occasion. Whether you're looking at me or not, that's what I'm going to do. That's why I go off to hear what other preachers preach and teach. I ain't worried about what they preach like that. I am who I am when it comes to preacher. I want to see what they did. How are they dealing with people? How are they handling situations? How are they building a hundred million dollar church facilities? How are you being blessed? And how are you getting people to give without making them feel like they're dogs because they can't give enough? And what is all this about? That's what I want to learn. And that's what you got to learn to do. You ain't putting fours and fives down. Guess what? If you're going to hang around some seven, eights, them four and fives might follow you. See, until you come to the place where you recognize who you are and whose you are, you will never be fit for the great and precious promises in life. It's real simple. Jesus provided for every bit of this. He imputed, give you the righteousness. That way you could take on this journey knowing that you're being conformed to everything Jesus done. It ain't a matter of, I'm going to preach this till it gets in your head. It is not about change. It's about being conformed. There's a difference. Conform is I'm taking on what I already am. Change says I'm not that and I got to become that. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I need to change. You stop change. You need to get born again and then begin to work, allow God to work on you becoming everything he's already made you to be. You can't lose knowing that. You can't lose. The will of God is for you to be conformed into the image of his son. That's why y'all come to me, I, 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 stop, you're talking to the wrong person. No. Let me read this statement and then we're closing. I 
I don't know why I didn't read it, but I'm going to read it. See, patient, it is the endurance, staying power to hang in their power. It is the major weapon you need to let outlast any difficult times of stress or pressure that comes your way. So if you're going through some rough circumstances at the moment, be encouraged. It is a fleeting and temporary condition that will soon change. It's time for you to get your eyes off of your challenges and stop fixating on your problems. Make up your mind that you're going to stand your ground and hang in there. It won't be long until the problems flee. And when they do, you'll be glad you didn't give up. Amen? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Come on up here. Hold on, let me get you geared I, up. I can just talk right here. I don't mind that. You may want to preach something. I don't. Tess. So yesterday I was um, standing in prayer uh, with Liz Jones. Uh, her daughter, I mean, well, Liz Rudd, not Liz Jones. She's Liz Rudd now. She's a Rudd now. What are she's you talking about? She's a Rudd about? now. I, she's a Rudd. Anyway, her daughter uh, had her baby yesterday, and when he was born, he had swallowed some amniotic fluid, and they had shipped him to another hospital. And, um, you know, stand on God's word that, you know, find what. And so I, I was praying for the baby and I was declaring and decreeing God's word. And a few of the scriptures that the Lord gave me, I quickly looked them up and I sent them to her. And what's so crazy about what you just ministered was this last thing here uh, says, and it kept coming to me. Stand and see what the Lord is going to do. Just stand and see in the scripture. And 1 Samuel twelve sixteen says, Now stand here and see the great thing the Lord is about to do. Guys, when we are in that place where God is trying to work something in us, like patience or uh, step back and wait and see. We're not seeing our loved one healed or we're not seeing it in the natural. Those things, we're not feeling it in the natural in our body. But God is telling us to stand. Stand in the middle of the chaos or the shaking and wait excitedly to see the hand of the Lord, what he's going to do, this thing that the Lord is about to do. If in the middle of all that, we don't get on the crazy train when chaos is coming in our life, if we just don't get on it, but we stand and we expectantly wait to see what God is going to do, we're going to see it with great expectation, but don't turn your back on it. Don't run. Don't give up in the middle of the hard thing. And uh, we're going to see a great thing that the Lord is going to do. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait, wait. And by the way, a few minutes late, uh, a little while later on in the day, I uh, text Liz to check on the baby. And she said, just moments ago, they took the tubes out of his lungs, and he's breathing on his own. So we did see the Lord do a great thing yesterday. Hey, and all you unspiritual folks, a lot like, see, see, like me, if you call me for prayer, I'm like, Lord, thank you. Touch him in Jesus' name. Brandy's going to be one of those, oh, Lord, your word declares over here. Hey, hey, hey. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, I am so unspiritual. Why does everybody call my wife for prayer? And they just ask me to pray. You know what I'm saying? So, sir, sometimes if you don't feel so spiritual, just relax. God's called you to serve and protect. And that is your job. I'm going to stand and be pay, let patience have her, her, perfect work. Her. Just look over at your wife and say, I'm going to let her, I'm going to let her have her work. Hallelujah. And you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny, just enjoying life. Big thing is I don't want you to crumble. You hear me? 
And I hope you have somebody to talk to a little bit when things are getting under heavy pressure. Can I tell you something? Learn to find them now sometimes before the pressure comes because pressure is going to come. And if you don't have that person to talk to, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Find that somebody.